There he is. Thanks, man, for being here. That's so it's so awesome to to meet someone like you. That's great. Thank you uh, so much for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. No, I can hear you great. Okay, perfect. I heard a little bit of the introduction. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. So why did you reach out to me? I guess, first of all, I'm curious about your whole journey. Maybe you could start there. Well, you know, as as I had wrote you in the email, um, you know, I my myself, my team, we had been researching different people that are willing ultimately to challenge challenge the status quo. Um, right. And uh, of course, the Andrew Tate was one of the biggest stories. You know, it was an international story. Uh, and there was, you know, some people like yourself that were willing to at least question. Right. Uh, with our situation with Keith and Nexium, is that there has been basically one narrative for the past five years. This actually started about five years ago. It was in 2000. <coughs> it was in October of 2017. Now, when just the New to York clarify, Times Keith Ranieri is, is the leader. I guess I don't know what's the correct term of Nexium, and he was he was convicted for. Geez, was like seven different felonies, huh? But he yeah, so he, he didn't convicted. do any of it. Yeah, so I'll I'll definitely get to all of that. Um, what he was he was convicted of many different things, including sex trafficking, forced labor, mm -hmm. uh, racketeering, um, wire fraud. Yes, although I believe yeah. wire fraud. Yeah, yeah. Now, although I believe you know he's innocent, that's ultimately not why I reached out to you. Right. Um, it was given the fact that the narrative. Um, was, you know, basically an international narrative creating this, you know, basically was a hate campaign against Keith Raniere and Nexium mm -hmm. and the community. Sure. Anyone, anyone that was uh, trying to speak out was basically vilified. You know, anyone that, you know, came out in support of, let forget Keith, even just uh, came out of support of Nexium. Uh, was vilified in the now, media. I, you know, I, I actually really support Nexium. I think it's super interesting what they've been able to do. I want to say, uh, Andrew Tate, I, I totally poke holes in that. Like, I don't know if you've been following the case in Romania, but like, there's so many red flags that says he's innocent. I don't know if you've been following that. I haven't been following it closely. Obviously, it's definitely been uh, something I've been watching from afar as it seems like there's just a lot of similarities in the fact right. that, uh, you know, we live in a time that if you make someone a monster in the media, uh -huh. you know, it's, you know, guilty, you know, basically you're guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> right. You then, the authorities oh, well, can then just ultimately to, just to do whatever they there. want sorry, to the person. Sorry to cut off. Actually, Keith was convicted of seven crimes, though. Yeah, my, the the reason I said that is because right, okay. before the trial even happened, right, he was right. already vilified and right. made into a monster. You even right. have uh, even on the Doctor Oz show. This was before Keith was even arrested. You have Doctor Oz mm -hmm. uh, saying on national television that Keith uh, raped and tortured women. Oh my! Now, God. just so you know, even after he was convicted of these charges, and right. this is what's mind blowing for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Keith Ranieri, who's, uh, you know, this alleged sex cult leader uh, of an international sex cult. Right. If you actually look at the charges and the evidence of mm -hmm. what he was convicted for, there's not a single charge. <laughs> this is crazy. There's not a single charge of violence, weapons, or drugs. And there's not a single charge of Keith Ranieri having sex with someone. Um, well, let's see here. Count to, let's see, cons a sexual exploitation of a child. He was convicted of that, right? I just want to, I just, because I want to clear his name with you. So he was convicted of sexual exploitation yeah, so of a child, I, possession of child pornography. Yep. Uh, he was convicted of trafficking for labor and services, extortion, sex trafficking, forced labor, um, attempted sex trafficking. So he tried and failed, but in other ways he was successful. That's what they claim, right? But th it's outrageous that he, yeah. And he was never, well, me, he was never, he was never, yeah. he was never violent. And so that kind of says it all, huh? Yeah, I want to be super clear. There's okay. most of what people have heard about Keith in the media and then what the government, you know, put out there in the media as well mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, completely false. And most of it is completely fabricated. Right. Again, that's not my intent of why I wanted to come, uh, you know, on and, and talk with you guys. Um, obviously, if we had longer, you know, conversations, we could look at more specifics and things about Keith Ranieri and who he is as a person. But in the emails, why I got in touch with you is, is that one of the things that happened right before the trial, you know, here you had uh, an investigation of, for a whole year. 
And the, uh, there were six co-defendants, and this whole case was about consenting adults. And then 55 days before trial, all of a sudden- It was also about wire fraud, all of a sudden, trafficking, racketeering, child Yeah, so those were all the different charges. Okay, okay, but extortion. Even with, okay, okay, sorry. Go ahead. Well, just to be clear, though, even with all of these horrific charges, sex mm -hmm. trafficking, forced labor, yeah. racketeering, wire none fraud. of the co-defendants had pled guilty. None wire of the fraud. None, none of the-, of the none Right, of, right. None of them have pled guilty, which is almost unheard of in federal court. I think it's like 97%. You couldn't flip them because they they're There's, innocent. There's nothing to flip. So the thing is, is that 55 days before trial, all of a sudden the FBI found child pornography. And when mm. I say child pornography, they found 22 photos of a nude woman mm -hmm. on an external hard drive. It wasn't on his computer. It wasn't on a camera. It was on a random external hard drive in uh, a residence that many people frequent in. It wasn't even Keith's home. So of course, the moment they found that it completely changed the whole dynamic of the case where now you have uh, minors involved. Right, and, 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 not and, only and they could they have planted it. I mean, the FBI has a track record of doing stuff like that. I mean, they are, they're just monsters, the FBI. I don't trust them at all. And I think they probably planted it. But my concern, at least just from the optics point of view, because again, I'm on your guys' side, Camille was a 15 year old who tested, she wrote a victim statement, impact statement that said that he took, he actually raped her when she was 15. And she put out a statement and, and all that is crazy. Oh, she said she met him when he was 13. And then she, when she was 15, he yep. was 45 and he slept with her. But that, that's just, why was she lying like that? Yeah. So I want to make something very clear. I don't support sexual assault against women in any way and no i know any of my friends know, of course who, who are out there i just want to make that very clear of as course. it's a very sensitive subject yeah of course what what i was saying though and then i will get to the the uh, she did say those things but what's important yeah, okay, to realize okay. is that the child pornography was was all of a sudden found 55 days before trial and then right. all the co all other co-defendants <laughs> pled guilty so oh. not only was he co was he charged with possession of child pornography, he then was also charged with sexual exploitation of a minor, which is probably one of the most egregious charges somebody can get against them, you know, charged against them, which ultimately yeah. and, and, is and a just, death sentence for many people. Yeah. And just to go jail. back to what you're saying, 55 days before trial, it's like, it's like, when did they have the time to investigate that, you know? Well, just, well, they also had had this hard drive and this cam, this alleged camera for over a year. So, so yeah, that's the, 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 that's the context which happened right before trial. Uh, yes, Kimi, uh, her name is Cammy. She did uh, give a victim impact statement, mm -hmm. but what is important for people to realize is that a victim impact statement is after the trial is over, after the verdict. So it's a statement given on, not given under oath. Well after the trial so you're was over, saying, and she also didn't test. You you think she's lying essentially? I mean, or at least there'd be no consequence to her lying, right? That's my point. I'm I'm not yeah, here yeah. to debate whether or not. Yeah, you that's don't want to call her a liar. I get it. What, but you know what's crazy? What I'm saying is okay. Go ahead. Yeah. What, what I'm just saying it's important that we live if we want to live in a society that has due process and we care about justice. It's important to question. Absolutely, it's important to question. And my point is. If somebody gives a victim impact statement and says, mm -hmm. I was raped and this happened, I'm not saying that's not true, but you can't say that that's ultimately true due process when someone's not for under sure, oath. For sure. There was no trial. And so I mean, that's, so that's my point. What I there do was no know trial. Sure, like which why are we supposed to take her impact statement seriously when there was no trial? That is my point. Okay. What I do know, which is under oath and uh, you know, sworn statements is what I got in touch with you about mm -hmm. with respect to, we now have seven digital forensic experts, and this is what's incredible. Four of those seven, four of the seven oh, are sorry, former I'm sorry, before we FBI. Go, before we go down that thread, I just wanted to mention, and I don't know if this is an issue for you guys, but there was 15 other victim impact statements from all different individuals. So that's like, dang, how do we get over that? Again, there's, if we had like a three hour podcast, I can go okay, into different things. Okay. This is the short of it though, just okay. to even answer. Like I said, uh, my intent wasn't yeah. to try to yeah, yeah. Uh, defend yeah. or combat like all these different allegations. But right, right. again, 
what people don't realize the way that the narrative was out there is that 17,000 people, 17,000 people from around the world took these courses. Okay. Mm -hmm. One in 400 of participants in the classes that Keith had created were billionaires. We had people from Stanford, from Harvard, uh, entrepreneurs. These were very thoughtful, rational people right. taking courses that kind of had like a profound Scientology effect on way, their life. Right? I mean, Scientology is the same way and they get vilified too. They have tons of famous people, tons of rich people, and it's unfair that Scientology is vilified, don't you think? I haven't taken Scientology. Right. Okay. I don't agree okay. with, okay. yeah, I, but, well, no, but, but my point is I don't agree with character assassination, right. um, you know, or speaking badly about a group just because they're different or you don't like them. But okay, I the reason you. I mentioned about the 17,000 is, is that if you actually look at the trial in the next year trial, there's actually out of 17,000 people, I think in the trial, don't take my word for it. I think there's only three people that were students of the 17,000 that were even claiming uh, they were victims of a crime. So the only, so three so out of 17,000 so, people claimed that they were molested by Keith. Well, no, they weren't even claiming oh, oh, that they oh, were oh, molested. Oh, oh. There's not even, this is what I, this is like how, the, the insanity and the, the exaggeration of what's out there. Right. The, the, there's not a single charge of Keith assaulting or raping or, or hurting anyone, uh, means of violence. There's nothing, there's nothing in the trial of that. Right. There's no violence. They're only, they're only saying he coerced them, but that's not really a crime, is it? Well, that's what they're claiming. But, but right. my point is, is that if you want to look at the reality, if you even want to say that everything that happened in the trial is true, yeah. this is a man who's now convicted and sentenced to 120 years without yeah. any violence, that's, weapons, drugs. Right. And told, and I'm with you 100% because coercion is not even a crime. Like you can, it's not illegal to manipulate people. We, well, you, it just means you're smarter in a way. A, you know what I mean? Like if you're, if that's you're not able even, to manipulate people to do what you want, this just means you're smarter. So again, and this is a whole conversation about, you know, things in the trial, right? but the, the bigger issue, the, the, the thing that is, I think vital and, uh, relevant to <coughs> everyone who's lit, you know, listens to you. And then also just all, you know, citizens in the United States we now have four former FBI agents that right. were digital forensic experts that have come out that under sworn testimony shows that the child pornography evidence was to a scientific certainty tampered with wow. and also planted. That is very and some concerning. some of the evidence points, and some of the evidence points that some of those, uh, some of the modifications took place while in the possession of the FBI. That is very concerning. So what is the, um... So what's the goal here to get a retrial for Keith? Well, part well the the ultimate goal is trying to investigate um, these crimes. Right. Uh, there's clear probable beyond probable cause that that crimes were committed by FBI agents and potentially even the prosecution and maybe um, other entities other entities as well in the DOJ. So we're going to um, and that is an effect Keith. of that. Yeah. Because the because crimes were committed against uh, someone who is being tried in a trial to mm, convict them, right. that person should ultimately be let free. Let him free. And so Keith, let free Keith. Well, what's free Keith? Well, what's interesting is that first of all, the FBI is a criminal organization just from the start. I mean, it's insane the things that they've done to people, like tampering evidence in the case of Keith. But I think that because they did that, we should probably just expunge the extortion, the identity theft, the forced labor, the uh, conspiracy to commit identity theft, exploiting of a child, forced labor. <laughs> <laughs> Wire fraud. And, uh, and so we should, we should expunge all those, huh? I, it took me a second to get your humor because, like, there's also a little delay. I was like, "Is he making a joke?" I was like, "Oh, yeah, okay, I know, I know." Sorry, I just, uh, yeah. But so, like, well, what do we do about those other ones, right? Because, like, we got to convince everyone that Keith is like a cool dude. Uh, well, th this is what I'm saying is, is that we don't need to convince anyone of how cool he is. Um, someone can can think that Keith Raniere 
um, they can believe he's the devil. That's mm. um, that's ultimately irrelevant and a distraction to the reality of did this person receive due process? If we want to leave it, live in a society that we want to have a justice system that treats everyone exactly the same, whether you think someone is the devil or you think someone is uh, Mr. Rogers, they should be treated exactly the same under the law. Now, if it's the case that the government actually had evidence on Keith Raniere, then the question then becomes, well, why would they need to fabricate and tamper with evidence? Right, right. That is the question. Free Keith. Actually, well, I want to talk. I want to just to answer. Oh, go ahead. You. I wanted to ask you just about the your last thing. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to just make one other comment because you said, as I know, you were you were being facetious about yeah. all these other charges. Yeah, yeah. If you add, again, there's you know. These, these buzzwords of sex trafficking and forced labor. Yes, those uh, on its face value sound horrific. Right, right. but what, it, what does it even mean? If, exactly. If right. you, like when you think of, you know, if you heard that you're, you know, someone that you know got charged with sex trafficking, what would you imagine? Yeah, I would imagine somebody was locked to a, you know, a, 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 fur, uh, a, 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 a what do you call? Yeah, locked to a Furnace. radiator doing, forced to do like or, webcam radiator. work or, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. what, and that's a real. That, by the way, is a real thing. Sex trafficking, people being kidnapped, yeah. forced into sex slavery, is a real thing. If you actually so, look at the evidence of what happened in this trial, you have a 29-year-old female who is an actress living in Manhattan, who is a part of the Nexium community. She was taking classes. She was in a relationship with Keith. She also had a history of being more kinky. Together, they had kinky. come up with with an experience where. Uh, and this is literally, if you look at the transcripts, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. One woman, this 29-year-old, received oral sex from another woman, and no money was exchanged. She took a bus from Brooklyn to Albany. Right. And they convicted Keith Raniere of sex trafficking. Cause she, just because she was kinky. Well, that's one way to look at it. Right. The same woman, the 29-year-old actress... She's also the victim of the alleged forced labor. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who had to transcribe five hours of video for a memorial. And she read 50 articles that Keith had written and she gave feedback on them and actually loved reading them. Mm. He was convicted of forced labor. Because, because she wasn't now, paid for her work or what? Well, that's what they were claiming. And how old and was they she? were able to concoct. She was 29 years old. Oh, what's, what's, but my, my right. point yeah, is, the, is that right, totally. there, there's... What's in the media, which isn't, and of course, if you hear these words, it's not like I don't hear these things, forced labor, sex trafficking, and it causes Horrible. me to have caution. And I'm like, holy, Can holy I, crap, what, what the, happened here? So but this one sounds really bad. And hopefully, because you, you have such an intimate understanding and you have a great way of explaining it. So how do we do the exploit, sexual exploitation of a child? Because that one sounds so bad. So how do we break that one down? That one is also related to the, the child pornography, as I said. So they found... 22 photos of a naked woman. Now, by looking at the photos is not how they realized oh, but that it was child pornography. But it's women he it, knew, right? It, it was girl. It was girls he knew. Yeah, this yeah, was, yeah these yeah, are yeah, women yeah. that he knew. Yeah, and so um, someone, somebody had pictures of them naked when they were kids. But it wasn't Keith. Well, no, but this is, no, just if right. I could just finish real quick, is, right. is that the 22 photos were not deemed child pornography because they were photos of some sexual act. Mm -hmm. The way that they deemed them to be child scene. pornography was based was based off of the file dates. And based off of the oh, file dates, they oh. then said when the photos were taken is when this person They probably didn't even look old. like kids in the picture. That's what I'm that's my yeah. point is is that by looking at the photo they weren't deemed child Have pornography. You, and I mean if you saw the photo, which you you should get a hold of those photos. You, they probably look like I have not seen adults. I have not seen the photos. Oh, you have those okay. are uh, you know those are contraband photos. Right. But my point is is that again, when you hear the word child pornography, it incites you know all these horrible images and fears. But what we're talking about is on an ex not, not on someone's computer, not on their camera, <coughs> not on a camera card in a random external hard drive. There's 22 photos. Right. Um, of a naked woman who they deemed this was is... underage because of the file dates. So j just the, the last thing is the sexual exploitation of a minor is because supposedly they were able to link through a media card and from a camera and that media card to a scientific certainty by 
seven digital forensic experts, four former FBI, was modified while in the possession of the FBI because they were able to link that media card to a camera that's allegedly Keith owned. That's how he was charged with sexual exploitation that's of a minor. That's so ridiculous that like that's all they need. Wait, I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're being no, uh, I'm dead serious. Like what the fuck? Like it's scary the world we live in where, like. And people yes. can just say whatever, and then like, oh, you just change the data on a file card, and that's all it takes. It's cra It's scary. As this a man, the, I'm scared of that. Everyone should be scared of this. This yeah. is why the reason we're, we're trying to reach out to people is because the narrative is so strong, and the it's prejudice crazy. against Keith and Nexium is so intense is that basically it stops people from having a rational, open conversation about, right. wait a minute, what actually took place here? And what took place here is not just, oh, there was some prejudice in a trial, is that clearly you have government actors, specific um, personnel in the FBI. And again, this is not an attack no. on the whole FBI. Actually, there's one thing this I want to get your thoughts on here. Uh, so Camilla's the one who he apparently had photos of. That was yes. the 15-year-old girl who did an impact statement. Or she, you know, she did an impact statement and said that he took her virginity when she was 15, which is outrageous. I mean... You can't, the thing is, you can't, you can't, I, she, if she was willing, what's the problem? I, I don't get it. But anyway, right? You're like, you understand that. Again, right? whether or not that happened or it's didn't happen. It's not assault if she liked it. And Keith is awesome. I'm, I'm starting, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling your humor a little bit more. Like I said, there's a little delay as well. Um. So Camilla, I just want to be so Camilla super clear again. I don't, I, I don't support sexual assault, rape in any okay. way. Yeah, I'm not here to be able to uh, uh, be a referee about what he said or she said or what happened behind closed doors. What I do know is that I don't believe that somebody giving a victim impact statement that isn't under oath, which is basically no different from somebody going on Twitter and saying I was raped by this person. Right, it's just with absolutely so, no due process. Right, because could be he looked at. He doesn't even know them, so it's like the same as a random tweet. Like they've never even met. No, they oh, they, they, they do have know met each Ethan. other. Okay, uh, okay. Shit. They do know, but they do know each they other. They do know each other. But do you understand what I'm saying? Though? Yeah, no, absolutely. So Rainier's. So this girl Camille, who she said in her impact statement that. Um, Ranieri and his co-conspirator, who also trafficked Daniela for labor and services, said they confined her to a hotel room, or to a room, sorry, for nearly two years in an attempt to force Daniela to work for him. And then Daniela was told that if she left the room, she would be sent to Mexico without any identifying documents. So that's probably what they mean by, like, sex trafficking or, or forced labor, but that's just her, someone on Twitter just making shit up. Well, again, did you see the second season of The Vow? No, I didn't watch the second season. Was that yeah? Gotcha. I, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Again, if yes, from just the the label of somebody, you know, I think it's document servitude. That sounds horrible, <laughs> right? But if, but again, if you just look at the facts, this is a young girl who is staying in, who is in a, a room in her family's home. Okay, like her family's. She was in a room and the door wasn't locked. Right. And if anyone questions me on that, this is incredible. This is how uh, amazing how a documentary can can seemingly put eerie music on something and make right. it seem horrific. Right. In the documentary, they're actually doing a voiceover of her reading, like uh, the from her lines uh, from the the court transcript. So they're reading it verbatim from what she said in court as she was testifying under oath. And at the very end of this episode, as she's talking about how she's been confined to this room for two years. Right. Do you know how the scene ends? How? She says, and then I walked out of the room. Oh, because she could have left the whole time. They don't, they don't really put because that out there. Because she could have. Of course. But it's, you know, it's yeah. the scary music and it's haunting and this illustrations and the cartoon. Right, and it's. Right, right. But the way that it's in the media, it sounds as if some that you know Keith Raniere you know, kidnapped I, I, I this person. I understand. I understand. Put you them in a room. Yeah, 
I want to ask you. And that's, that is the issue of, you know, again, of why I reached out is, is that in the media can do whatever they want and paint anyone, uh, you know, with, with whatever colors they want to create a certain image. And that does not necessarily match the reality of even no. just basic facts. Cause it's basically her fault for not leaving the room. And what's even crazier is that the whole jury basically like how did, like they all got, I don't know how the whole jury agreed on that, but I want to ask you about your experience with Tourette syndrome. I'm super, super fascinated by this. Um, this is so, so this is why kind of Nexium is, is kind of interesting because everyone always just kind of sees like the, the bad side. That's what's famous now, but Nexium actually has been helping people in these incredible ways. For example, you had debilitating Tourette syndrome, right? Uh, 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 and then I think you joined Nexium, and Keith was able to 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 help you overcome it totally, like totally cured. Like your Tourette's is one hundred percent gone. So yes, the answer is I, I no longer have Tourette syndrome. Wow! Uh, and it was through the courses that Keith created. It wasn't <clears throat> even one on one sessions with anything like oh, I see, with that I with see. Keith. Wow. It was, you know, he had created a curriculum that had was around the world. Like I said, 17,000 people took it. I went through the classes just like everybody else. But as I went, went through them and started to build more self-awareness about myself, I mean, ultimately the courses are, and are classes on uh, emotional intelligence. You know, we, we had a, a center here in New York City on 7th, uh, uh, 5th and 37th Street, you know, where it's just you go and sit in chairs and you have conversations with people. And that cured your Tourette's? You know, that is... Just that, just having so that. I just want to be clear. It's not. Go ahead. Yes, it was through through these conversations and through these classes, which right. were uh, a lot of them were philosophical inquiries right. about different aspects of life. There were practical things. It was also a goal setting thing for entrepreneurs. Okay. And it was through these classes and these conversations that beat my Tourette's completely mind over body. Wow. And so, what is it that you tell yourself, like, ah, just stop ticking? Like, come on, don't be a pussy or whatever. Or I know I'm jo I'm joking. I don't mean it like that. But like ah, I'm fuck. I'm over this shit. Sucks. Tourette's is fucking annoying, and I'm just over it. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's not like that at all. Uh, the the most simple way that I can describe it is that I, I've always talked about Tourette's is like there's an itch and there's a scratch. Oh yeah. And the Tourette's is that uncomfortable <clears throat> feeling. Mm -hmm. And then the 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 ticking is me scratching that itch, and <clears throat> most uh most uh, treatments and the way that we look at Tourette's is, you know, okay, how do we just help the person with this dynamic? So if you take medication, it numbs the itch. Mm -hmm. So that stops you from wanting to scratch it because you don't feel the intense. If you're talking to someone with Tourette's syndrome, how would you, what would kind of be your advice to them? Because I know it's just a horrible disease for the people who haven't cured it for themselves yet. And I feel like this, yeah. Knowledge, the, yeah. What, would, what would be your advice? Well, I don't say... Just to be clear, I, I've never said, and so we we actually had a documentary that came out. It's called My Tourette's. It's on YouTube for free now. Okay. Um, sadly, n almost no one in the world knows about it. It came out after, um, you know, the the negative press, the real negative press uh, started coming out about five years ago. Okay. But in this documentary, you you watch this these profound transformations of people beating Tourette's mind over body. But even in the movie, we don't say it's a cure. This is not it. We didn't have a cure for Tourette's. Clearly, we had a set of tools for people that were open and wanted to go on a different type of journey, you know, go on more of a, a, a looking inward. But you guys did cure For it. some... You said it's 100% gone. I mean, let's not beat around the bush. That sounds yeah, like Yeah, I just cure. don't say... The reason I don't say cure is because also I just don't think of it as something that you can cure in that way. I have like a right. completely different... I don't even think of it as a medical disorder in that way now. But what, what I just want to be super it? clear is that it's, I don't know if, I don't know if we could help everyone. I don't know that uh, okay, the people okay. that we helped wanted to be helped. Okay. If someone wants to lose weight, they could have the best trainer in the whole world, but if they don't want to lose weight, but you know, weight's it doesn't not, matter if you got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Not a, yeah, but being fat is not a neurological disorder. So that's what really interests me because according because, because of, to all the literature, it says Tourette's cannot be, cannot be cured. I... So it's incredible. Like preaching to the choir. I, yeah, right. I, I lived with it for tw I, I for twenty years. I became a, a well known inspirational speaker around the country, talking about Tourette's, living with Tourette's. My whole life was based off of Tourette's. I can't imagine uh, how hard that I, I get been. it. It was, uh, you know. So then to, to to take a class on emotions, and now to be able to have a conversation with you like this, 
I couldn't even have dreamt of it. I mean, it, it just wasn't even something that could be possible because of like, like what you said. I so, have Tourette's, this neurological genetic disorder that's involuntary and has no cure. Luckily, so, because of the of what Keith created and with Nancy Salzman, who also is in jail now, uh, it, it, I've been able to go on, on, on a profound uh, journey to live a very different life. Can I ask you a question? To answer do your you question. Still, of, do you still get yeah. the urge to do ticks or is that completely gone? Like, where, where did you cut it off? So the, that, the, the, the thing about the itch and the scratch, because of how the courses were very different, it's not like I'm sitting here. And my itch is a hundred percent. And I'm just like, okay, right. don't tick. Don't say, don't say something, you know, and hold it back. Right. The, right. the courses were different than any other thing that I did is because by going on that exploration, I found out that, that my itch was way more emotional and psychological than it was physiological. Oh, and as a result and working internal issues, I had anger stuff, um, beliefs about all this sorts of stuff. As a result of that, my itch went down. So right now, down to zero. do I still have an itch? Yeah. It's not at zero, but it's probably okay. at four out of a hundred. Okay. 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 So, but so to call that Tourette's is not, I, I don't even think of it as Tourette's. I think of it as I, I'm a person that has a body and all of us have uncomfortable things. And what I, I come to understand, and this is for me, is that ultimately I was in a sense had an impulse disorder. Mm. It doesn't mean I had a neurological disorder. I and found this as video, I work thing, or this old video of you, I found really compelling from 14 years ago. Do you mind if I watch it real fast for the audience, just sure. to kind of give you some, some background? Yeah. So this is from 14. Absolutely. This was 14 years ago from a um, local news story or something like that, right? That covered your story. Yeah, I was. Yes. And did you? Yeah. So okay, let me watch it. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you were about to press play. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to press play right now, okay? Are you okay if I press play? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. I thought you were, you were hitting it. Okay. Can you play it, Dan? Oh, I, it's on me. It's on me. Suspense. You got you right. to hit play. Are you ready, Mark? I'm ready. Okay. A day before my 17th birthday is when I really ran into the greatest obstacle I had ever encountered with my Tourette syndrome. A St. Louis area teenager who says he has Tourette syndrome claims he was kicked off a Greyhound bus in Indianapolis because of his disability. I got on the bus and uh, they made an announcement about my Tourette syndrome. And uh, earlier in line, a lady had heard me saying some inappropriate words. And she stood up and she said, well, how come he can say this word? With that, this Clayton High Jr. who turned 17 tomorrow says he was kicked off the bus in Indianapolis. So you were, your tick was actually to say the N-word, right? Yeah, different oh. times I was saying what would be wow. the worst thing that I could possibly say in a given moment. So, yeah. you know, if I was around a fat person, I would want to tick your fat. If I was around a black person, I would want to tick the N word. So at the time, it was a nightmare. At, at the time you were on a bus and with, it seems like from this image, predominantly black. And then you said the N word on the bus. Yeah. The, to make a long story short, I had told the bus driver about my Tourette's before I got on. And then I got on the bus then I was taking it more, and obviously customers were complaining, and rightfully so. I mean, they right. had no idea what was going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the bus driver, you know, they, you know, as I've gotten older, I actually thought the bus, the, the company dealt with it as well as they could. You know, um, I mean, it's just a difficult situation. I mean, just because it's a medical disorder, although I don't see it the same way now, but of course at the time, you know, what do you do? You know, it's it's just not, I don't think it's as simple as, oh, well, this person has a disability. They just have, you know, can do whatever they want, carte blanche. Like, it's a very difficult thing because I'm also saying something that's offending people. Luckily, nothing bad happened. You know, I, I was safe. It could have, it could have escalated and gotten very bad. So you went, um, so did you, okay, so let me keep watching. So you're on a bus and you said the N word and then people got mad at you, I, right? So, so that's the kind of, the and yeah, then the and bus driver kicked you off. Yeah. So let me keep watching. And ultimately, after a few... Elliot says he was on his way home from a church youth camp when the incident happened. Elliot and his family say they've traveled all over the country and never been denied access to transportation. His family calls it a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Up, up to that point... So, do you, so, I, so I, I appreciate that you guys all made it into like, kind of turned it into like a crusade here. 
and went to the local news about it and stuff because it's let, let me, I have a theory for you. I'm ready. Okay, cool. I think you actually fake having Tourette's. Yeah, I don't think, I think you actually don't have it. Well, but and, and I, I'm, I'm open to it. Uh, Here's my what, what, what here's my think well, I, what did you think I had? <laughs> well, let me, let me just break it down. I think this is kind of a funny thing. I doubt this is what happened, but maybe you're just on maybe you just called someone the n-word on the bus and then you're like, "Oh, no, I have Tourette's." Because what's interesting to me, and I know that's funny, but what's interesting to me is that you've made like a whole career yes. being a motivational speaker about how you cured your Tourette's and stuff and that's kind of become like a big part of your identity. But what's interesting is, as somebody with Tourette's, I actually have Tourette's. I know it's not curable, so I just find that claim to be absolutely uh, a pseudoscientific, <laughs> crazy claim that has no backing in science or at all. And I think you're actually, uh, in my opinion, right, as as someone with Tourette's, I think you're scamming people. Well, for, uh, first off, I did you say that you have Tourette's? I do have Tourette's. I didn't Isn't know that crazy. You... Yeah, I know. That's why I was so surprised when you emailed me because I was like, I was like, I have Tourette's, and I also fucking hate Andrew Tate. I've like talked like continually and openly, relentlessly about what a piece of shit he is and how much I hate him. And what's interesting too, Mark is that I've also talked about how much I hate Keith and Nexium and what a psycho he is. So when I got your email, I was like, this is incredible. And I could totally see how it is you fell into a, into a cult because you clearly don't do any research. <laughs> you know, when I saw the, uh, when I was watching one of your videos, I, I thought I saw you ticking. And yeah. so I, I, it did cross my mind. I said, I wonder if he has Tourette. Yeah, I do. Why would you, that's so interesting. Why would mm -hmm. you, why would you think someone would fake it? That's a pretty messed up thing for someone to fake. No, I agree. But you've made a good living from faking it, doing like motivational stuff and, and writing books and stuff like that. And it's just, as far as I know, and that's just a theory, right? Cause I don't know. I mean, I just have Tourette's myself, but obviously I don't know anything about you. So it's just a theory. But I just think that you can't cure it, actually. And on your website, it says you overcame it, mind over body. And that's just not yeah. possible. But that's why, I don't know if you remember what I just said two minutes ago, is that we've mm -hmm. never claimed it's a cure. Right. Well, on, let's see. Uh, let's see. On the, if we pull up your website. Well, when I, when I started, you said you're 100% like over Tourette's, right? You did say that. Yeah, well, I said that I don't think of it as I, I have Tourette's anymore. Right, you um, don't have it anymore. I guess just I guess what I could say is, um, yeah, the fact that you don't like Tate and you don't like Ranieri is not a reason that I couldn't talk to someone. For if, sure. if anything, it's about that's not the point of trying to find right. people that love him. It's right, right. if you can find people. Even if somebody hates someone, the question is, do we believe that there should be due process in this country? And are we okay with government officials or FBI agents committing crimes to convict a man? Right. So by yeah, somebody the, not liking it. Yeah. But in the email. By someone. Yeah. Yeah. But somebody not liking him is, if, if, if anything is, is definitely better. Um, I definitely did not research deeply every single person. Obviously, at we're all. In a well, yeah, you know, situation. you didn't look. You actually didn't look into it at all. Like the most basic. But let me break it down, Mark, because in a way, I see you as. Well, just to be just to well, be hold super, on. just to be very okay. Go just ahead. To be, be very blunt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, be blunt. Yeah, I, you are right. I, I did not do research. Yeah, my someone that I know who's Keith. Currently, he's been sitting in the shoe for over 200 days. So they're basically torturing a U.S. citizen while at the same time he has filed in the Eastern District of New York with four former F FBI agents showing that the FBI tampered with digital evidence. And they're now uh, escalating the torture, and they might ship him to what's known as a CMU. Can I read a excerpt which is a communications from your, Can I write, read an excerpt for you? It says, do you, this is from your website. I, this is your website, right? MarkElliott.com. Yep. Yeah. 
Do you want to beat your Tourette's? I want to help you, but currently the government has threatened to put me in jail for being public about how I completely overcame my Tourette's with Nexium. Yep. So when you say completely overcame, I just assumed that meant like that you have a cure for it. Yeah, we just, I can, I can address that in a second. We can talk about that. But the, the point is, is that. Can you cure like bipolar you or of, something? Can you cure like schizophrenia? Because that would be really good for a lot of people. The reason, so because of how big the case is, right. and I'm reaching out to people that have influence. Mm -hmm. I believe that even though you might hate those people, and I didn't know, I didn't know the depth of, of how much you dislike them, but yeah, okay, no. yeah, is that there's something that we can agree <laughs> upon? I thought at well, least here's that something, you know, here's are we some, okay? Well, we can all agree on that, that, that's, we can all agree on photos. Here's photos of his initials being branded into women who accused him of running a clandestine sex cult. Here's his initials branded into their skin. Here's an up close so, for you. Uh, it says it says his initial Keith Rainier is branded into their skin. What what is your what's what's your point? That's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Oh, my point. Um, that the well, thing is the thing. So, so the point right, is right, no that that was just for fun. That up, was just like a funsies bring, thing. Yeah, but the thing it was just is, like a fun look, little I'm, group building exercise. No, I'm serious. Is, I, I no, I'm, se I'm serious. I, why do you? Why did he do this? Because if I'm curious, I want to ask you. The why thing did is, he if do you're it? gonna, if you're going, if you're gonna say things, they need to be factual. They're just kinky. Keith They're Ranieri, just a little kinky. But Keith Raniere didn't brand anyone. Oh right, he, he's not even in the room. He coerced people but to the, do he's it. Not, yeah, so coercion's a crime. Not, actually, it, I think you, coercion is a crime. Sex trafficking usually I, happens through coercion, not by uh, locking people to a radiator. So that, I think, is where we kind of disconnect I, there. I, and actually, what's crazy is I had the told jury you agreed with me. Twelve people I had, agreed. I had told you before. I know, I had told what? you before oh, that and the appeal court. is a crime. Oh, what's crazy is he appealed, and then the appeals court also upheld these seven horrific charges against him. So that's like a lot I, of I people. I wasn't here. Yeah, that's a lot of people. I, like I had said, I'm. I had said to you in the very beginning is is that I believe most of the things are not true out there. That doesn't mean there isn't kernels of truth. I wanted to talk to you about something that I think is greater than Keith Raniere, the fact that you, we have evidence that shows that the FBI committed crimes. Yeah, but the FBI is, I agree wanted, with you that the FBI is shitty and they do that kind of stuff. But even if we discount everything the FBI allegedly uh or you say they let's just assume for the sake of this conversation that they did do that then you still have to explain all these other charges like I, I, even I if he's not even if he didn't have child pornography on a hard drive right and let's just say he didn't do it it was a conspiracy we don't or maybe they changed the metadata you're still racketeering forced labor wire fraud sex trafficking extortion so do you have a do you, you know what i mean so they're kind of an issue here if you're well we've been the, the thing is look I, I i this is the first time we've we've ever met ethan yeah um i said to you in the email of that if you want to have more of an open rational conversation <laughs> we can challenge things in the first half of this i talked to you about some of the facts that it sounded like you, you were agreeing with i didn't realize that you were just trying to play me I, the things that I said, I stand by, I don't need to change anything, even though now I know that I guess you were trying to have sort of a, a gotcha moment. But like I said, with the photos, with the woman, the HBO thing, the sex trafficking, which is a single sex act with no money exchange. These are things that yeah, but if so, someone yeah, wants but to you, have a conversation. You, right. But you got to understand that no money exchanged and him not doing it himself is kind of the quintessential of a uh, cultish kind of racketeering, like manipulative, coercive Muslim, act. Like he's not the first person, like, right? Like Charles Manson, yeah, but like for I example. Said, Does but, Charles is Charles Manson guilty of murder? Is, well, answer that. Is Charles Manson guilty of murder? He never did anything. I don't know. Never. I don't. Okay, I'm I'll explain it to you. I'll explain it to you. What? Charles Manson. People say he was a member of a cult. His disciples went under his uh, uh, order or coercion to go and murder this family, right? And so his lawyer said, well, he didn't do anything. He wasn't even there. And so the question is, 
do you think Charles Manson is guilty? He was in jail right now for, for being involved in their murders. Even though he wasn't there, he never held a knife in his hand. You know what I mean? No, no money was exchanged. They didn't even get, he didn't even pay them to do it. I have. Oh, he's dead. No... That's a correction. Let me issue a factual correction. No, but this is, yeah, this is dead. what I would say. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about the case. Obviously, I know of Charles Manson because of, you know, of, of how it's been, you know, he's a he's very good popular. He, he's, name. he's probably innocent too, right? Well, I don't know, but what I do believe right. and what I'm absolutely will stand by is that I do think no matter how hated a person is, we should be absolutely open to questioning narratives. We should be able to question um, I think part witnesses. Of, we should be able. I think part that, of a redemption of accepting people who are bad starts with them, you know, coming to terms with, with what they've done. But that's what I said from the from the get go. I said, I'm not on here to try to get you to like keith ranieri but you can i don't know if you remember i did say i did say to you you can think he's the devil mm -hmm. no i don't think he's the do devil you remember, do you remember think... when i said that no but no but my point is but you're if saying, someone wants you, to believe that so you're saying we need to that's take, not what i'm you're saying we need to take the time to look at the kind of the facts and the situations and come to like you know just with our whole hearts and minds come to a rational decision well my question to you is that's if, a trial. Do you believe that there are? Do That's you a believe trial, that by there the are way. He lost two of them. No, but do do you believe that yeah. it is okay under any circumstance for the government or government officials, whether it's a prosecutor, whether it's a judge, whether it's an FBI agent, to commit a crime to of convict? Of course a person? not. No, never, dude. If we agree no. on that, Ethan. Yeah. If you and I can agree on that. Yeah. That's all that matters, and that's why I'm really? here. I don't that, that, care. That doesn't yeah, seem very significant. And, like, like I mean, we can both agree that Krispy well, Kreme if, donuts are great, taste great, but that doesn't fucking do you, really why have do any... Think, why do you that doesn't have that nothing to do, do with, like, wire not, fraud and racketeering. Why do you believe that that's not significant? Because it doesn't, it doesn't affect all the other unrelated crimes he was convicted of. But, no, but, but I think that the part where we're just missing is, is that sure. you keep making it about this case... What I'm saying is what I'm addressing affects every single case in oh, the United States. Oh, this is States. bigger than Keith. Yeah, the, Keith is not bigger than the justice system. If you allow or you are okay permitting government officials to commit crimes, to convict even a hated person, what you ultimately are saying is that you believe that prejudice and hate are more important than justice. Here's you and Keith. He has really nice skin, fuck. The thing is, he, uh, you did, I'm did trying you to have a, I'm, I'm trying to have, no, I'm me trying too. to have a serious conversation. No, with I was you. just struck by his and, really nice skin. Did he ever drop? I'm just his, saying, I, I, yeah. I'm just saying out of respect, I'm trying to have a, a, a conversation with you about something that affects millions of people around the justice, you know, it, millions of people in the justice system and are affected by our justice system. Uh, it, this isn't about Keith. It is about Keith because this is the specific case and the specific evidence that we have. Do, do you mind if I take a moment and read some of the quotes from the FBI agents? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let me ask you this. I don't even blame you because honestly, in a sense, you're... I, you're kind of the victim of, uh, uh, you're, you, you know what I mean? Like you're part of this organization that clearly has some powerful hold over you. And I'm, I'm really sorry that you got somehow you're involved in this. And I just like, Keith is gone. He can't hurt you anymore. You know what I mean? Like you're free, bro. I, I, I appreciate the, uh, I, I do believe that I'm free. I'm an adult yeah. that makes decisions in my life. Just like life. that girl in the room, just... you're free, man. Just walk through the door. What I can say, again, is I reached out to you. Um, I'm trying to talk about things that there's a lot of prejudice against talking about. Mm -hmm. You have a case that has international attention, that yeah. has a lot of hate and a yeah, lot of keep, prejudice. We're, we're, and okay, now we have okay. that. We keep it. We're kind of, yeah, you've said that. It's okay. Listen, um, I want, I really do wish the best for you. And I, I'm sorry that you're dealing with all this stuff. It seems like you're going through a lot and uh, I just, you know, I'm sorry, man. I just, I don't know if there's anything, you know, they must, do they have photos of you? Like, like they must have, they, cause that was their thing, right? Keith had like blackmail there, there's photos. There's no photos. I just, yeah, for, okay. for anyone who's listening that wants to find out more, they can go to makejusticeblind.com and they can look, look at the evidence with respect with respect to the FBI and you know what I've been talking Actually, about here. This and this is the video, right? Uh evidence of historic FBI corruption. This is the one you're talking could, about. Could we at least 
Could, could we at least watch Al, One minutes. of the guys is Alan Dershowitz. He well, he's, represented he's an attorney. At, he, he's Epstein's lawyer. Could could we play it the, from the beginning? The it's Dersh. only two minutes. Let's. You know what? I'll do. You know what? I'll do that for you. We've been through a lot together. I'll That's play. Awesome. I'll play you the Dersh. Well, no, can, no, no. I'm saying, can you play it from the beginning, which is the experts, which is actually what's most important. Well, he is in this video, so I'm assuming he's an expert. Well, he, no, but he's he's under the section of advocates in the beginning of the two minute video. There's the whole section on experts. It's only two minutes. I'd be, oh, he, I'd be grateful he, if you play that at least. He's an advocate. Okay, cool. Yeah. If this alleged FBI malfeasance turns out to be true, as our experts say it is, then this is really historic. This is really an attempt to frame somebody based on manipulation of data. That's just unacceptable in an American court and in the American legal system. I'm the former United... He's the man, bro. Alan Dersh. But can, the thing is, is there a reason you can't play it from the beginning? It's only I'm, a I'm afraid that it's compelling, frankly. I don't want... No, I'll, I will play it. I'll play it. I'll play it. So these people... Um... Yeah, that... So these these are I would just ask, these are all former FBI people. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play some it. Some of them are former. I owe, awesome. I owe that to you. I owe that to you. Yeah, I owe that to you. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it. Awesome. Experts versus Keith. I worked in the FBI for about ten years. It is clear that the photos in this case were planted there. This is the most serious. How did they get the photos to examine? Because there's apparently child pornography on the photos. It seems kind of like a hot potato. And so let's just very, finish, uh, yeah, let's I watch, And I hesitate to call pictures of child pornography a hot potato. You know, they, I mean? they're not looking at. No one's looking at pictures of child porn. It's there's. They're looking the at metadata. the files, okay, the file data, right, the yeah. metadata. Okay, got it. Tampering with evidence that I've ever seen. It's inescapable that the FBI proactively created fake evidence. Data Damn. changed while I was in FBI custody. Uh, it was modified. It was altered. In 25 years of digital forensic investigations, my conclusions were different. Zach, can you turn it down? The amount of technical ability and premeditation to form this fraud in the case against Mr. Ranieri, I've never seen anything like that. In my 20 years experience with the FBI, I have never seen data manipulation, evidence tampering, like anything like this on this scale. When I first read the papers that Mr. Ranieri uh, presented on tampering, I was shocked. I've never seen an instance where the system threw away its credibility purely for the purpose of convicting uh, a defendant. If it could happen to a person who is educated, who is white, who has the complexion for acceptance, as I would say, none of us are safe. There's no need to fabricate evidence for a guilty man. The fact that they fabricated evidence here, and to the degree that they did, shocks the conscience. If this alleged FBI malfeasance turns out to be true, as our experts say it is, then this is really historic. This is really an attempt to frame somebody based on manipulation of data. That's just unacceptable in an American court and in the American legal system. I'm the former United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Arkansas. In the face of this alarming evidence, there's really no excuse for the court or for the prosecutor to hide behind procedural delays and waiting to get to the bottom of this. They should take immediate action, and if they can't or they won't, the United States Attorney General should appoint an independent prosecutor. If an independent investigation determines that this tampering occurred, there must be accountability. People have to be criminally prosecuted. This is very serious. Okay. Shortly after Mr. Renner's legal team first exposed this corruption, the government retaliated. Yeah, I mean, what I, I, I know that you were playing the music, which was unfortunate and making the jokes. You know, these are people, whether or not, again, whether you hate Keith Ranieri mm -hmm. or whatever you think about Nexium, you know, these are very um, people that have served our country. Those are uh, four FBI agents, other uh, distinguished experts. There's also a former U.S. prosecutor. Um, 
you know, again, if you don't want to uh, hear that, <laughs> I and, do. And I do. Agree, I'm so, that's, you know that's what? Okay. I, I'm here's what I. I just want to. I'm going to give what you I the. Po- is, here's if, what if I want to do. Here's you what I want to do. Wait, I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Had, I want to give you the platform. I'm just going to step away because listen. Obviously, we've been doing some goofs here, and I feel I owe it to you. I'm going to step away. I'm, I'm going to sit right here and listen, but I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm just going to let you say your thing. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. All I'll say is first, thank you again for, uh, you know, allowing me to come on. I didn't appreciate sort of the, the way it went, but even with that, what I'm talking about today and the video that you saw with these experts, these are serious, serious things that we're talking about. I think, uh, I think that's, uh, What's wrong? What happened? Well, thank you. For that. Yeah. Do you want to give a closing statement or anything? No, I think that they're just putting things on the screen. Oh, it's just no. That helps people's attention span because it's a little boring. So it's a little dense. So sometimes you put kinetic yeah. sand or subway surfer. It makes it easier to listen. Gotcha. Thank hey, you for having me on Did you see this today, photo guys. of you guys, of the three amigos? <laughs> did you I'm with you by the way A cab brother <laughs> you, don't, you don't know how to turn off zoom You're trying but you can't get away How do we How do you get out of this <laughs> You're trapped Well oh, there's no trap Well again nice to meet you Ethan And uh yeah, I, yeah, thanks for having me on. on I'm sorry. I'm sorry to put you all through that. It, ultimately, you are the victim, and I hope Rainier's dies in prison. I really do. I really do. But one day you're going to be free of this, and I'll be there to help you. I'm so sorry. You, this is Keith's fault that you went through this. It really is, and I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm thanks. For, thanks for having me on today. Yeah, thank you for joining us. All right, take care. Have a, have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Oh, God. He hung up. Yeah, I know.